the conversation, I guess, um, thinking about these projects and what kinds of things might help, I guess, first of all. So that should be our focus, I think, to start is a week from now we're going to get together and we're going to just share some ideas. And so to sort of set uh, the tone, we're just getting together in the teacher's lounge and sharing some, hey, here's some ideas on how to integrate Clinket language into whatever. And so that's, that's really the goal. So it's not um, you guys teaching us the lesson, but maybe just sort of sharing some materials and then we'll just have a chance for a feedback. So that's really the thing is we're sort of, we've got the idea and it's a little bit more than a seed. It's like a little plant. It's like a little potato thing coming up. And so now it's a chance to sort of start to tweak it. And it might, might be something you've already been sort of actually doing as well. So uh, that's what I think we should do, just sort of presenting one kind of idea and then having a little bit of a discussion afterwards about how to continue on a language journey. Uh, so that's kind of setting the tone. So. Does anybody have anything that we can help with and sort of as a as a sort of communal work group here? So you said in, we're going to be in a lounge because I, I'm, I'm actually going to have a, some slides that I've started. That's, that's great. Is that, is that hypothetical? Is that lounge? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just yeah. like we go, we go the metaphor. Lounge. That's the yeah, metaphor. I thought we'd go to the distillery. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be at a lounge. I had a friend, he said, my clink is so good after a couple beers. <laughs> <laughs> or one of those gin and tonics. <laughs> right. But they would have to fly, uh, to fly, fly this yet up from Yale over to, uh, to Juno. We'll yeah. be meeting somewhere else. But no, I, yeah, so will we be meeting in, will we'll be be meeting in here? We'll be here. Uh, my preference would be you can do it once you get here. That's fine. But just send me your stuff so I can share it on. I'll put it on the, on the screen and we'll do a screen share. That's the easiest way to do it, whether it's some slides, uh, one particular document, what, whatever your sort of method is. Okay. Uh, I have most, I can display PDFs, PowerPoint, Keynote, Pages, Word, whatever. And then um, I guess we'll have a little bit of a technology, not a hardcore technology discussion, but a few things about working in the language uh, that we've learned over the years. Or that I've learned over the years. In terms of underlines, programs, fonts, uh, dealing with special characters, even from your phone and stuff like that. So there's probably more stuff generally on Apple devices. <coughs> uh, just I think that's just sort of the folks who are producing a lot of stuff are working on Apples outside of. I think Jeff Lear is probably still working on a PC and maybe some other folks, but. Can you tell me, you know the day that we were, um, we were talking about downloading that app for the, so that the underline would be truly like below the G and that sort of thing? Uh -huh. I immediately discovered that I couldn't do it because I don't have, like, my IT people are very protective of, in, like, I'm not an administrator. Oh, computer. right. I can't. So well, I need to ask. the district, you, right? You have, yeah, you have I need special to, permission. Right. Ask for permission, or have you, so can you tell me again? I, I don't know that I took very good notes on what that was because I was just sort of initially frustrated that I couldn't do it, but so that I can specifically ask for either them to give me permission to make that download or for them to do it for me or whatever's needed. Okay, well, let me walk you through the steps, anyways, and then we'll, we'll put this on the screen share uh, just in case folks want to see it. Uh, so this is for installing a keyboard on a Mac. You can also install one on a PC. And I can, we can't really walk through that step, but I can show you uh, basically where, where to go for that. So is the that first thing. Is that use the time right now to do that? Because you could also yeah, just send yeah. these. Okay. Yeah, it shouldn't take long. Okay. So if we go to clinkitlanguage.com under the resources tab, and it's under print and web, uh, and then if you, scroll pretty far down and I think uh, just so I can get myself a tad sidetracked there's a document here called the Scatic 
categories of the clinket verb, uh, which is a, a huge document of fart jokes that are showing how to conjugate clinket verbs. So it was, it was very fun. It was written by Nora and Richard Dauenhauer, who I miss tremendously because they're always good for a, a good sort of joke, but also does look at how verbs work. And so a lot of the stuff we've been talking about, objects, subjects, and stuff like that, it's in there. And if you want to just sort of have a kind of a fun look at it, it's right there. Uh, so if we go down pretty far, there's a couple things here. This one that says Northwest Coast Keyboards, that's how you would install a keyboard onto a PC, something with Windows. Uh, and then I, I, I can't walk you through those steps because I don't use I haven't used a Windows computer in a long time, but it's basically, it's a keyboard, and that's a website, and they have instructions on that website. Uh, so that's how you could do it. The actual function of this particular keyboard is, I believe the semicolon key will put an underline on the character before it. And so if you want to actually use a semicolon, I believe you hold the and Alt, the Control key down, and then you push semicolon and it works. There's one of those other function keys. The forward slash will put a high tone mark on the letter before it. So those are, that's the, the sort of, other than that, it's, it works like a, most other keyboards. When you select the Crippen Clinket keyboard, uh, it'll download a file, and if you click here, it should open that file So you end up with these three things. So here's these three things, and you got to put them in a certain spot on your computer. So to do that, you're going to push Command N to open a new window. And there's a couple of things you need to be able to see this thing down here. So if you don't see this path, you go to View, and it's under Show Path Bar. And so if, if Right, so that's something, I think that's the one it is. No, because it didn't hide. Anyways, it's one of them. So yes. mess around with those until you can see them. Uh, click kind of just about anywhere. And you want to double click on this one that says Macintosh HD. So on your hard drive, then to your library, and this is the spot where if, if you have someone else who's in charge of your computer, you might need their help. But then you can walk them through the steps. In the library, you're going to look for a folder called Keyboard Layouts. You'll drag these three documents into the keyboard layouts. Uh, and then computers, depends what operating system you have, but from there you'll go to System Preferences, You'll go to Keyboard, Input Sources, and you, won't, you probably won't have these ones listed. It'll probably just be US. You'll push the plus sign. Under Others is where you should find, so it, it marginalizes our keyboard, but whatever, we're fine. And then that's where you would add the Clinket one. Uh, you could add Hawaiian, too, if you're hanging out with the Hawaiian people. And Cherokee is already on here. So we've we got to work on that so that Clinket can just be installed. But, and so it's right here. Uh, there's usually a checkbox here for a show input menu in bar. And then you'll see this is the little TL for the Clinket. And then you can hold here and you can switch your keyboard if you need to. So what the Clinket keyboard does is everything functions the same as the US keyboard, uh, with one exception. And that's the apostrophe. The apostrophe is actually a character instead of punctuation. So that it might look kind of funny in certain fonts, or it might not even show up in certain fonts. If you hold the Alt key down while you type the apostrophe, you'll get a regular uh, apostrophe. The reason for that, because if you had a word like posh pays that ends with an apostrophe, if you double click on that word in a program, it's not going to grab the apostrophe because it th thinks it's punctuation. Whereas the character, it will grab it. Uh, then the other difference is when you hold down the Alt key and type a vowel, you get a high tone of that vowel. And when you type one of the consonants that has an underline, an XG or a K, 
you'll get the underlying version of that character. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, and then hopefully your IT folks can, because you can use underlines in a program, but I don't recommend it. I don't recommend using underlined fonts, because uh, the formatting might disappear. Uh, and I think we went over this, like I'll just show you. So if we just opened a doc, if we started a document, and here, so if we type X, G, K, these are with those special characters. And so there's, there's a couple things to remember. So if we had X, G, K here, and we underline them, there's a big difference, right? So the one of the big difference number one is it's just an ongoing underline. Uh, it doesn't you don't see those individual characters. And big difference number two is the G. It gets hard to tell where that sort of underline is, especially like we'll put uh, space in between these. And you did that with a control semicolon, did you say? Or no. So in this in this program. You would just you would hold the Alt key down and then push any of those characters. So the way you got to think of it was once you push the Alt key down, it's like you have a different keyboard. And that's okay. Sorry. Yes. Oh, good. And that's to back up just a little bit. So when I open this client, uh, Crippen, mm -hmm. I get those three those three files. Yep. And I drag them where? To there's a folder. You go to your hard drive. Uh -huh. Then to library. And to keyboard layouts. Keyboard, the keyboard layouts. Okay. And then if you go here, it should, it's kind of got the instructions right here. And then sometimes your okay. keyboard selection, it's changed. If you got an operating system that's a couple years old, it might be slightly different. And then the other thing to keep in mind, so like, so here's our things. Uh, the top one is the only one that has these special characters. But there are certain fonts, like if I just like pick this font. Um, that one seems, well, it's actually not okay, because then if I type my name, right? So this is what you watch for, is that it's not, the font does not have the character, so it'll look different. And so there's, there's certain people who are kind of font people, kind of design people, uh, so just there's a set, you know, so there's Times New Roman tends to be fine, Cambria, uh, there's a, I think Bookman is, is fine, Helvetica is fine. Uh, some of the, a lot of the Adobe fonts, if you have any of those, they, most of them don't work. And so just keep an eye on it, maybe test it first before you start. And it's, it's good to have some consistency throughout whatever you do. Uh, and it's up to you what kind of decisions you make. I, I tend to sort of use uh, the Brill fonts, which is very nice looking. Um, so if we switch to like Brill, it doesn't have any problem with those. So it's consistent. Uh, but we see the underlying characters that G is, is kind of hard to see. And then if I copy and paste it, what's going to happen? Uh, and so the, the big downside was I found these fonts that do sort of like uh, letters for learners. And it doesn't work. I thought that would be so neat if it worked, because mm -hmm. then kids could just sort of, mm -hmm. right? But you know, there, there's ways around that. Um, and it depends what program you use. Most newer versions of Word are fine with this. Uh, most uh, the Pages is fine. The Internet is totally fine. Like if you're writing on a blog or, or Facebook or something, they tend to be totally fine with this. Most of them are using Helvetica, anyways. And then um, An email, like email's email. fine. Yeah. It tends to be just fine, uh, unless whoever's receiving them is reading them in some special font, you know. Which most people are just they stick with what's there. Uh, if you're using any the high tone, yeah. And then the high tone, the high tone's usually fine too. So we go a. Hey, how did you do the high tone? Sorry. Oh, same thing. Is so. It all once you hold down the Alt key, that's what that's what you're getting. 
So the alt key gives oh, you Oh, okay, because it's a console. Uh, well. Yeah, let me go back to. So that's what the high tone gets you. If you get into, the, there's a few other tricks in this keyboard. Uh, I don't know if we necessarily, I guess the command N, if you push the command N and then N again, you can get a tilde over your letter. If you're writing in Nupiak, uh, if you push the Alt button and the six, and then you can get the circumflex over the top if you're writing Mnungoch. So it's a pretty friendly font for Alaskan languages. Uh, if you have an Apple phone, there's a, or an iPad, there's a pro, there's an app called Chert, C-H-E-R-T, and that's an, another, it'll install a keyboard into your device, and then you can also use those characters. So basically, if you hold down on the letter X, a window will pop up and you can select the underline. And that has all the writing systems for all of the Alaskan native languages. But it's not available, unfortunately, on a, and any other like a Google device or a Samsung or anything like that. But if you were if you were sort of typing another sort of option, and it's kind of a long route, is by doing into your phone you can get into auto text and stuff. So you type a KH and it'll replace it with the underlying K. But that that takes an extra step. So any other questions? That's great. This yeah. Oops. <laughs> there goes Chewbacca. So why don't we share real quick? Uh, just do a little bit of collective brainstorming. What are you guys working on? Just as a reminder for your final projects. Jen and I are working on something together. Just kind of. Heading up the community aspect of it, and I'm doing an art kit. So that's exciting. And since I don't really have classrooms, and my work is more about putting things into the community, arts education in the community, um, Nancy and Amy and I came up with this idea to extend her art kit into the community and be able to bring the language out that way. Oh, fantastic. Also, First, Nancy will do the art kit in classrooms with students, and they'll create posters. She, I think, she mentioned that she loves. Um, we were talking about that today. That we sort of we, we weren't able to be here. We sort of used it as sort of a workshop. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And because uh, <laughs> I do this all the time when I don't even have the baby, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get to do it and now. When I do it, I look foolish, but no. <laughs> Um, well, the idea is to. Do you want to talk about the well, kit I first? I mean, I don't know that we could we'll, we'll be presenting next week. Oh, right. But, yeah. Exactly. But we're in process of um, working with Barbara Cadiente Nelson because she's our district you know, personnel. It's, it's kind of her uh -huh. Kuliana to, you know, so. Um, but it's been, yes, yesterday we actually videotaped Paul Marks and David Katzi having a conversation yes. about six different poignant words with the TCLL 4 5 class. And um, because the video will be part of the lesson. So then we're kind of pontificating on sort of painting the picture of these six different words. Um, and they were fun together. They were hilarious, actually. So, right. I mean, That's I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. They had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, they like, fun. they were getting the kids to laugh. They were telling the kids to laugh. <laughs> it, it, was, it was neat. So, anyway, I'm excited to share with you guys a little bit about it and get your input. But that's something that Jen's piece will be to um, do some outreach into the community in the design of the lesson, but also um, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, um, unless Sarah wants to go on. Sarah, go on. Okay. Um, so I do a leadership class for the early scholars, and so um, it's called Value Centered Leadership. And I went and looked at some of the um, some of things that Sea Alaska put out. And so um, I'm kind of you saw I'm going to need some help with the pronunciation, but you know trying to. Uh, so 
So the, uh, the words that uh, so it's that that there be peace and harmony amongst each other. Oh, uh, nice. Coming out of the, uh, you, you've probably seen those. So one of the things, and you'll see it more, but so you'll you all get the words in here, and, and uh, I'll present that. Oh, great. So anyway, it's just just basically looking at at the the the, the what I already have, but now putting in the you know the the, the point of, you know what that piece does. So and I know I'm butchering the words, so I'm gonna need some help when I present. Yeah, no, that work out. That's okay. And then one of the things that. Uh, that I also have like some some videos of you know that I'm, so I that I'm trying to incorporate, but basically that, that, that's it. So uh, one of the things too is you know I'm I'm still working on on on, um, on things that's still a work in progress and trying to get the words for for these uh, for these different uh, these different pieces oh, that, nice. that, I, that I've got going and and I've included some of the things that we're going to be doing with the. Uh, with the one canoe, oh, with right. the one canoe project, and then uh, and then I'm going to need some help trying to find words like a you know for what is the, what's the claim for navigating oh, or right. path finder. Right? Yeah. And so I'll be I'll be hitting you up on, uh, during the week maybe you know, uh, trying to find that on the dictionary. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. If there's words you guys can't find or things that you uh, that you want to me to look at for spelling because before we were using these special characters. And there's a lot of people who still don't, which is fine. But if you copy and paste something, it's probably gonna the underlines will probably be lost. And so that's that's one of the things that does happen. Uh, but yeah, so if you want me to look at stuff, I'm happy to look at stuff. Yeah, it's, it's and then uh, to end it, uh, I love what you sent me the uh, the, the video on the uh, on the, the, the local. Uh -huh. And I, uh, if there was time, I was gonna end it with the with the uh, the video that you. Uh, Oh so, great! You know, they, uh, the the the, uh, the the video that is that uh, Wayne? Other car. Yeah. You know, they just said Wayne. Wayne Price. Wayne Price. Yeah. So anyway, so I don't know how much time we have for our presentation. So I don't want to. You know, like, uh, do we have five minutes? Do we have ten? That's minutes? oh, that's a good question. How many are we? By this point, I think it's safe to Robin say. And Robin and Ray will be here. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Dach nach dach wani nach ke jini nach ya ke dushu nach ya kosh nas ke dushu nach maybe there'll be eight of us I think maybe ten it's it's hard to say we have uh, two hours so 120 you know ten minutes yeah about ten minutes okay. and then we'll just sort of we're just kind of see. Time to Interact about each one. Yeah, they give us a little bit of trend. And, and so, what we should, I think, what we should do is present all of them and then just have a discussion afterwards, just in case anything we might sort of get interested and then talk about something else. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, we're cutting into other people's time. So, I think that's the way to do it. And we'll just sort of list them up here and then, then talk about some things. And then I'll share some things if I have any immediate sort of feedback of things that might help in terms of corrections or. Anything like that. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess my goal for this class is to um, just basically get a diagram done for the framework of the um, curriculum, I guess, for the pre-K. Uh, so the name um, gave me the idea to kind of do what they did in Hawaii, where they have um, basically like an image or a picture of the entire landscape, including the mountains down into the ocean, into the, even the deep ocean, and having like all the animals. And I think even for our age group, it would be, you know, plants um, and things like that. So my, my focus would be just the names Having the, creating the diagram and having just the names of all the um, animals and the plants. I don't even know if I need them that all of them. Just some maybe of them. one of each, right? Maybe yeah. and if you're looking at pre-K, but maybe not. Maybe I mean they they already know a bunch of. It's so interesting to think of what should they know by a certain age, especially if we're looking at trying to create this immersion environment. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I saw they this I saw this first grader stand up in Hawaii and name like. 
about 25 different fish. It's just a picture of fish. Just yeah, I really think we should be squishing. I mean, the, if we're just focusing. Anyways, but I guess the goal that, you know, that they do in Hawaii is that, that, that transcends all through the grade levels. You know, mm -hmm. like, you start with pre-K, just the names of the animals, and then as you're working through it, you're, well, what's eating what, and what, how are, you know, where are they living, and how are they interacting with the other animals, and how do we interact with those other animals or those plants. Um, so being able to take that across the grade levels. But my goal is to just hopefully, and he has some illustrations. Possibly. Yeah, and then we looked at it, we were kind of brainstorming today, because Yakutat, they're, they're opening their language nest next month. So we go, <laughs> so I think we go Sha Shaki, Sha Yada, Sha Da, Askatu, An, Nietzsche, Kis Tai, and then Hintak. Yeah, but I think, you know, the, the muskeg in the woods, right. and the wetlands, and all of that, you know. Yeah, right, the Shechik. So, so it's going to be, I guess, it's going to be hard to draw a picture like this when it's so much of the aerial look is going to be different than just the side view. See, because I think I mean, that's the key, because you, so we're really teaching ecosystems, which is what I saw in yeah, Hawaii. That's what it is. So that's a, here's this area, here's what we call it, here's the animals you find here, here's what they're like, here's what they eat, here's the plants, and then they would talk about like whether we can eat them and, and stuff like that. And then, and they would just highlight a couple where they would start from. But then, and then they would go down. So then as we go older, the, the sort of model stays the same, but then we can start going into these ecosystems within them. So not just, because it's really, you know. forest, but the muskate within the forest. Exactly. Okay. exactly. So, so that's where the shechk would come in, would probably be further down the line. My, my goal would just be to start, yeah, for the pre-K. And so I guess for me, my goal by next Friday would be to explore a little bit more in Adobe Illustrator and get some sort of images. Yeah. And if you guys are looking for images of things, let me know, because I got, I got a subscription to this thing and I've, I didn't use it all winter, so I can get like 200 or so. <laughs> I'm giving them my money. But um, luckily it's, it's just adding, because it used to be like if you didn't use it, you just, there it goes. So. But they've got illustrations and pictures. Oh, go ahead. Can I just offer my NIS analyst, um, he has a drone. He does a bunch of field work um, that's all natural resource based. So he has a bunch of really beautiful imagery of watersheds, of stream systems, of muskegs. Um, and I'm sure we'd be happy to share images with you. Um, if you want any of that, just get in touch. I'll put you guys in touch. Yeah, cake and cheese. Yeah, that'd be great. Because we're always looking to build this sort of inventory of things. Because there's there's lots of pictures of birds out there, but not like of all the different little types of ducks, all the different. And and we got we got words for all of those things, you know. So yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, this Yeti, you want to tell us what you're. What you're up to, I'll put you on the screen so we can all see your face. Oh no, no. I see your face. <laughs> <laughs> I see your face. Well, I, I, so that whole that 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 I still would really love to work on that um, and maybe sort of talk that through a little bit or get a, a little bit of um, translation help Pune from you um, whenever you're available just to see, you know, um, how many Tlingit words I can put in there. Um, I was just up in Homer doing a residency for two weeks at an elementary school and I tried the poem out with them, um, just the English version, because um, I didn't feel like I had the Tlingit uh, words you know, right yet, but um, I tried out the English version with them and it went great. They, K through fourth grade, learned this poem, this long poem, they memorized it, they performed it for their parents and the rest of the school. They did a bunch of, um, they learned, you know, parts of how to communicate a story using their body and their voice and their imagination uh, and it was really fun so 
Um, if that still seems like a good idea to you, I'd love to figure out how to um, clinketize that. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. Um, one of, uh, let's see, who was it? It came up a couple times. There's this film by a guy named Bob Holman, H-O-L-M-A-N, and it's called Language Matters. And, and I thought of it because he went primarily, I think, to Hawaii, and I know he went to, uh, out among like Irish folks and with their Gaelic language revitalization. But it was really just sort of looking at language revitalization projects in a few different places. And when he went to Ireland, he went to, in Gaelic, they had these huge like Gaelic poetry competitions. And then he, he, he composed a poem in Gaelic and, and read it. And so these are things, as we think about how far we might take this thing, for us, you know, we're just starting to get some exposure to the language and we're trying some ideas. But the long run is, we're gonna want kids, there's, there's going to be speech contests and there's going to be poetry contests and there's gonna be plays and stuff that are done entirely in Clinket. It's a really fun thing to think about. Uh, because when, when we got a lot of traction with this thing, then I'm just gonna retire and write soap operas and clink it. So that, but we're gonna have all the capability of doing that, the actors, everything else. So there's this movie coming out, and it's all in Haida, and then that's just amazing. There's also a movie, I should have mentioned this closer to Thanksgiving, or Halloween. There's a movie called, well, it's Kusaha Kwan, but I think it's called Kusa Ha Kwan. Those, those are the two words, and it's like a, kind of a B-rated horror movie that's based on like, there's a mosquito story in Clinket, and this is like the mosquito story part two. And, and it's, it's pretty good as far as a sort of B-rated horror film goes. But there's this, when I first uh, found out about it through Saul Neely here at UAS, uh, I started watching it and I thought, oh, this will be wonderful. This will be like some cool kind of cheesy, scary movie, and there'll be terrible, Clink it and great acting, and, and the clink it in it was fantastic, right? And so there, there's this, I don't know who the narrator is, but they had a fluent speaker and he would narrate these sort of chunks, and, and so the whole thing's in English, but then there would be these chunks of clink it narration. It was really a fascinating movie. I think we have it in the library, and you might be able to find it online. So. Okay. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll try to find it. And then, uh, so it's, I think it's K U S A is the first word. And then H A K W A A N. Maybe. Because, <laughs> you know, Kusaka is eating people little bits at a time. And then Kwan is the people of, which is interesting because that's, that's the clinker word for cannibal. Which is weird because other people. Yeah. And then the but the Kwan part is what's the interesting part for me because that's usually associated with like a whole like a nation or a community type of thing. So, so that, what are the, what's the those stories that the kids talk about that are kind of scary? There's the Kushtaka. Yeah, the Kushtaka. So we got quite a few of those recorded, some of them in, in Singit as well. So and then also just interactions with the Kush. And where did that come from in terms of security stories? And it's like a, it comes from, I mean, the land outer. Yeah, so the word for land outer is Kushta, and then the word for a person is Ka. So Kushta Ka is a land outer person. And so the land outers were very, they're very powerful creatures spiritually. And so a lot of times, like, let's say somebody, you know, that it's a tragedy, so people just, fell in the water the other day. But when, when people got lost and they, they couldn't find them, they would go to their healer, which we call an ikht, and they would have a ceremony. And in some of those ceremonies, they would converse with the land otter people. And, and so these, uh, Kenny Grant suggested our word for internet, which would be the, the medicine person's path, because he said they used to be able to talk to each other. Like there would be one here and one in Yakutat, and they could have a conversation with each other. And that's how he liked to think of the internet. Uh -huh. uh, but they would have these like spiritual conversations with the land otters, and they would usually, they could tell them what was going on. And so they were very, very powerful, and there were, they were things that would help quite a bit. But they'd also come and kind of steal people, 
and then you'd end up going and running with them. And so they could turn like they could become familiar people, people that you might be familiar with and mm -hmm. would trust them because it's your auntie or your uncle or your cousin and then if you go with them things happen. Yeah, or you're you're stuck somewhere or there's somebody who looks like they need some help. And so they, they trick you, and I think they put these little thoughts in your brain. That's how I think it works. And farting. There's they don't like they, they don't like, like farting. Or, they don't like copper, and they don't like tobacco. Cigarettes, yeah. So those are the three things. You, you know, if you don't have any copper or tobacco, you gotta like kind of crank like one out. <laughs> like like <laughs> barley yeah. to be a fire. Yeah, yeah, and then and then they'll they'll sort of take it. They don't want to be around you. But there's there's a number of people who run into these types of things. This guy I you know. Uh, in Yakutat, he said he was going out, and then, and we don't whistle when it's dark out, oh, right. because they like to make these whistle so sounds, and so you're going to call them. Uh, you also don't make raven noises at night because it's disrespecting the raven, uh, and so the, you know there's a bunch of these sort of culturally appropriate things that you kind of learn, and you, you definitely don't go down in the water at night. Although we'll sometimes go in groups, uh, but you it especially teaches kids not to go down by themselves to the water. Although, I remember when I was growing up, somebody wanted to bring us down by the water. And then we went and asked our grandparents, and they said, no, of course he can't go with this stranger. And they said, who? And we're like, right there, and there was nobody there. Oh. Right, and so, these were just things, you know, there's, but if, if this happens, so you, there's a couple of things that I've heard. One is you could say, and you say, I see you, and, and you, and you try and get them to talk. Because they won't, there's something about it where they won't talk. Like Sometimes, they put themselves away if they put them on the spot like that. Yeah, but they could put little thoughts in your brain. Because this other, this other guy, I know, I think he was walking, and they were going out hiking, they are going hunting, on a hunting group. And they, he had been walking down by this point, and his, his friends were kind of up the beach a little bit, and he could just hear this whistling around. He's like, weird. And then later they went, and they are kind of in for the night, and uh, they're in that little cabin, and then they're gonna go somewhere else the next day. And he starts putting his boots on. And his friend's like, where are you going? And he says, oh, we're gonna go meet so-and-so out at that point. And he goes, no, we're not. Take your boots off. And then, um, then they just, they're hanging out, and then like a half an hour later, he starts putting his boots back on, right? And he, this is the person telling me the story, and he says, his buddy goes, where are you going? He says, oh, well, we're going to get in the boat, and we're going to go out in the bay and go meet so-and-so. He goes, no, we're not. Take your boots off. Right? So they, that whistling is what sort of, and then if you, uh, if you have, the, the old thing is that they'd say in Angoon is if you have a paddle, you try and get them to bite that paddle because they can't change what their teeth look like. So you still see their sharp teeth. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of stories about that. So you just, you know, carry copper, carry tobacco, be ready to eat gassy food. Because <laughs> that one, there was, there was a guy, and his, his boat capsized, and he got stuck on this island. And after a while, this boat, of, this boat comes up, and these people were like, you know, they waved him aboard. So that's the thing is, and they, they do something so you don't think it's unusual. So he gets in, and he's like, ah, oh, thanks, you know, where are you guys going? And they, they wouldn't talk to him. And so after a while, he was just sitting there, and then he got really nervous, and he got an upset stomach, and that's when he farted. And that's when they were like, what's that stink? You know, and then they started talking, right? And, they were, and then they dropped him off at another island. And like I said, he turned to look at them, and it was these otters, and their boat was a whole bunch of little tiny animals that were just holding on to each other. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. Long stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, that's just the same feeling that I've always gotten when people tell ghost stories. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One time I was grading papers and and I was here till like two in the morning or something trying to get all my grades in. And the last paper had this really good Kushta concert and I can't remember. I was like, ooh, that was good. I gotta walk up to my car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I parked up the hill. <laughs> ran all the way. Okay. Well, uh, certainly send me uh, if you got any questions, if you want me to look at something, and I can, I can certainly help. I, I like the idea of 
final projects being collaborations. So I'm happy to help as much as I can. And so don't don't be afraid to send me a little ping reminder. Say hey, you know, just make sure it's on your radar. Because I don't know, I can't remember. I was, when you share your screen like this or something, and then I did it last night, and one of my windows was open. I think if I push this, right, let me share the screen and see if it works. We'll do a little experiment. So I was trying to share. Oh, I think I got to click over here. Anyways, oh, it's not showing up. But my little email sort of thing shows up here. And that's just sort of switching programs. And one of my students says, how do you have 7,000 unread emails? <laughs> and they said, you must be so popular. I was like, I think it's probably an organizational thing, not really a But I got your email thing. at 1230 AM. Yes, and so I do check emails <laughs> late at night. Yeah. Don't be surprised at what time when you're getting the emails. Okay. In the morning. <laughs> it depends. Sometimes I'm up late, sometimes I'm up early. Usually I'm up. Well, like, having you like having you record it was really helpful. Yeah, you and know, I can do that. Have, so then you can yeah, here, back to what it's like. So if you got certain phrases or other things that are in there, I can make a quick recording and send it back to you too. Are you um, looking for like some written up kind of thing that we hand in or? Like, Not really. I, I think we can take care of that. So you can show us what this thing is. You can tell us what your idea was, and then you could share two things with us. So you show it to us. You tell us what it is, then you tell us how it was putting it together, and then what you think it can continue to be. Right? So we we're sort of thinking of how do we keep doing this sort of thing? Because, um, and then I think when it's all over, I don't know if we'll have time, but I'm just kind of curious how, you know, the language exposure part of it. And I, and I want to have a quick conversation before we leave next week about how do you. Where do you go from here? You know, because we're really trying to, like one of my goals is to really try and knit those communities together. Communities of learners, communities, so there's opportunities, there's Monday night gatherings down at the library. I think Central Council is gonna have quite a few different language uh, opportunities because as of January, like all their employees are required to learn a language. Ooh, and it has to be either Clinkett or Haida, or you know, Simshian, so. Uh, that's really exciting to Which see. Click it and hide it. So if this is a collaborative effort that I can't find all, but I did have the concept. If we get, if we can gather, uh, and uh, if I don't have a chance to connect with you, and I uh -huh. can start some open-ended words that I need, can we work on it together with, with our? With that yeah, thing? yeah. So okay. like you could, sh and I'm not expecting to see. You know, it's sort of like I have another class, and one of the projects I gave them was to develop a set of basically interpretive signs that could go around the campus that would highlight uh, like a traditional pl a plant or an animal and talk about how that thing is used and the name of it. And so they, one did a glacier, the other did a brown bear. But what I really stress to them is like, don't think of this as something that's ready to go. But think of this as, okay, we're, we're, we're at about a 70 to 75% stage maybe with this thing. And then we can, we'll keep collaborating on it okay, going forward. Because I mean, the, one of the ideas with this is to sort of put, and I think the Juno School District is doing a great job of normalizing Clinkett. We, we went up to Haynes, and we're just talking about this concept of normalization. And normalization for a language means uh, you see it or you hear it, right? How familiar is the language with the landscape? And I think there's been a lot of work here because I've been in to, what I remember is all the schools I've been in here, I've seen the language at least somewhere. You know, so we're getting to a point where Hopefully it gets heard. I think it's still on the very outskirts of the curriculum for the most part. Uh, but we were in Haynes, and we were just talking about language normalization. I said, well, how likely are you to hear it? How likely are you to see it? Let's just take a walk and see if we see it. And we didn't see it. Mm, and, he, didn't see yeah, and so we started writing it while there. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> no yeah. time to waste, man. Get your right. talk out. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so a big part of that is pushing it into other things that people are teaching and just making that and making it accessible, just saying, hey, this is something that people can do. This is something that we have access to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I share just one thing? Yes. Um, I'm better. That's oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. No, 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 no. But I was just, I've been going through 
um, all of the Sea Alaska just took took all of those music pieces that were in all of the Sea Alaska Science and Integrated Language Units, and then I took all of the audio and put it into one file. I'm going to give it to the music teachers. But what it's been what's been really interesting is taking a familiar song and slightly changing it so that you can acknowledge the tones yeah. and also like shortening it, whether it, maybe it was a long note, but because it's a short tone, I'd cut it off. So it's been kind of fun manipulating a familiar song that a music teacher would know and try to embed a change of the melody line oh, so nice. that it, it represents the actual change in the inflection of the, the language. So I've been trying to do that with like head and shoulders and the bingo song. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to do is try to match it with the science curriculum because like bing like one is body parts, the other is um, the different salmon and seeing mm -hmm. if it's and then also just trying to you know when you talk about normalize that was that really made a huge impact on me where it's like. Yes, it, I need to find language that I use every day, mm -hmm. but also find like the um, songs that um, Ed Littlefield gave us, oh, right. and making sure that that's normal to be singing those songs, and making sure that we have the traditional Klegoof, am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. the, um, oh, yeah. In there too. So, like, the normalization is happening from both mm -hmm. sides. That awesome. So, I'm hoping that I can find a Klingit song that is okay, that has been given by Ed, or that is in the Sea Alaska that could be embedded, but then also using familiar songs like bingo and mm -hmm. things that music teachers already have in their head, but then we just slightly change the melody or the rhythm to help kids learn the language. Yeah, that's great. Because I, I think we sort of start by sort of translating a bunch of these songs, but then also bringing in the, the lullabies of the Blake Goose, and she knows quite a few of them. Oh, I just gonna have the whole book. Do you have the book? What if I have the, the book? The only issue that I keep finding with that book is that the, um, the recordings were on the last school, and I cannot get them to play. Oh, really? Oh, so, and I, you know, Robbie Littlefield is amazingly busy, but I'm sure she has all the files, and I've read to her a few times and just haven't gotten them, the sound files to them all. Huh. The I might have them. I do have head. the books. We oh, have wow. tons of them in there. And mm -hmm. um, as mm -hmm. far as I know, they are, I mean, they are, like the I shouldn't say they're to the yeah. public, but they're, they're not clan property. So it should mm -hmm. be a problem. Yeah, he had a file of his, and then also Robbie's. So I'm wondering, up maybe at the break, we can look and see if we have the same. We're talking about the same. Yeah, and one of the goals with this website was that this would be sort of a storage space for all of that stuff. So you have them? I don't. You if you, if you send them to me, I'll put them up there. Book, yeah. And then if you send me the audio, I'll, I'll put them up there too. Because there's other things too, like, so thinking about, um, we want to make sure that we're, we're making use of the speakers that we have, bringing them in, yeah. making use of them, uh, and, and they're wonderful. And if there are situations where we don't have access to a speaker, there's also lots of stuff on here. So if you go to resources and audio, uh, this is a whole bunch of Clinkit that you can, if you push this red arrow, it'll play, and if you push the down arrow, it'll download. So you can just download an MP3 uh, of this. And if you go down towards the bottom, uh, let's see. Here, these ones are from the Hashuka book that the Downhowers did. So you can Xerox a copy of the story, and then you can listen. Mm -hmm. And you can have students listen to it, and then go back and sort of read line by line. There's a lot of stuff that we could do. Uh, with this because they told us and, and they told these stories and they documented these stories and so it's really neat to think about that that interplay and then for your own language learning if you read the story so here's the text some of them have the text on it as well once you've read it a couple times your brain knows what the 
what the narrative is. So then if you keep listening to the clink it, like that, that does a lot for filling in some of those blanks, you know? And so there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes in between these, you know, when we learn a language, we learn these big, huge chunks, right? But then there's all this stuff in between those chunks, which is really a, a key to unlocking fluency. Uh, an example would be, I wrote a couple of words in Clinkit, I can't remember for what, and then my phone, or my, my computer was suggesting words for me, but there, I, I was like, I think these are French. So I just kept hitting it a bunch of times. Then I sent it to my colleague, Robin Walls. I was like, what is this? Does this make sense? He says, it kind of makes sense, but people don't talk like that, right? And so that's what we, we end up with if we don't do some of this work, which is putting ourselves into an environment where the language has primacy, right? Where we're not doing this little chunk, 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 you know, we start to sort of find these arenas. I like to download them, um, you know, like three or four, and just put them in my iTunes, mm -hmm. like in a playlist of quick English, and then it just plays through all of them. And I, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I know what they're saying sometimes, maybe I don't most of the time, but it's yeah. in there, and, you know, it helps you catch the rhythm of the language and the pronunciation and, and things like that, too. Yeah, and some of these are really, some of these are pretty short, some of them are really long. Uh, if you want to really kind of there's another one called Raven Book because we've been working on this Raven Book for That's where I've been downloading forever. And there's one if you go down a little ways, uh, Susie James Raven Cycle. So this is the, f I think she's the fastest Clinket speaker of all time. <laughs> uh, she is. This is where I learned that song. Except for she sings it really. <laughs> so in the, in the bigger picture, you know, would you think that, that eventually you would fit as a, as a thought there would be a, a song created that all the children would would know that has been? Yeah, we, yeah. And, you know, we can, we can is, is that already in, in No, it's in, not in motion yet, but it's a little, Is that something in a big picture? Gem, it's a little gem still there. there. Yeah. And, and that's the goal, too, is so it would have translated songs, we'd have these old songs, and we'd be making new yeah. songs, right? So okay. that's, that's what you want. And, and ideally, when you have a healthy language, is you've got those major sort of spheres going on so that nobody's afraid to translate all these different nursery rhymes or hymns or whatever. But then also, like, bringing in the old songs and also teaching them about ownership and use and respecting where these songs come from, and also the history of them, uh, and then also making new ones, right? And, and so that's that's where it gets really, there's a lot of fun in, in all of those arenas. So. And Lori, Lor, are you saying that um, you, the, the reason you were talking about it, you wanting to kind of gather those songs that have that were actually written in Klingon originally? Yeah, yeah. It's not like so it's not like we're taking everything is now. Yeah, 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 and translating everything, all of that's fun too, but that there are some songs that kids are learning that were written in Klingon, and, yes. and that should be normal for us to have in our music right. curriculum. Right. Does it translate for you know, four kids? Pretty mm -hmm. readily across the board. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, the great I thing about it is that it it's sick. Yeah. 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 I think it's why I, new song, I, think. I just, yeah. um, I mean, the one French thing that I remember from eighth grade was sung. Allo, allo. You know, it's still, that's what you remember in French. And so it's like, it was music, music helps you the best they could remember things. So I really feel like it was a way to. Yeah, but the fact that it was. One thing I think, Hawaii's got so much stuff going for them. But Hawaii, like, you just got an ukulele and Hawaiian, and it's like magic. And so, then we got to discover some things too, and how to bring Clinket into these other instruments and arenas, and what do we do with the? Because the tones, the tone ends up sort of becoming secondary to the harmony or whatever the melody is, and so that's kind of fun. Well, the hook song, Ed said it would be great for us to use it for violins, or like for first grade, we're thinking the hook song could be played on violin and have that be part of their right. repertoire. So that they're, they're building these yeah, that that, that's melodies also, inside already. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And then just here, I was thinking with all the drama that the district's doing, um, have, when you're at listening to one of the recordings, having the kids hearing it and just acting it out, 
because when we did Tides in the Tempest, we had a lot of English language learners, and it was Shakespeare. It was Dave Hunsaker, Hunsaker doing the Nats Cline story with um, the, the Tempest a couple, mm -hmm. well, many years ago. But um, he wrote it as a reader's theater for us, and there were kids who could, struggled with Shakespeare language, but they would move to it. So it was interesting at the very end when we showed them their performance, the, in, the, all of those English language learners who ended up being movers had the whole script memorized. Wow. So I was just thinking mm -hmm. as part of the maybe Roblin's work or with the district, maybe yeah. they could mm -hmm. pick one of those shorter recordings mm -hmm. and have kids move, you know, either through Tableau or acting out the story so that it has a meaning to them that they put in action to everything that. that they're hearing. Yeah, that's awesome. And have that 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have one that comes to mind easily that you think, oh, that's like great, uh, very accessible to children kind of Like a song or a story? Oh, a story? One of the oh, stories that maybe one of the Raven stories or one. Probably, yeah, Raven and Blueberries is pretty funny because he takes his eye out and he puts it on a rock. Mm -hmm. and What's wrong with the crane? The crane got blue same, same story. Same story. Yeah. yeah. Is it the same story? Yeah. So is that Raven story? Have you heard that in other versions other than when David tells it? The Raven version? Which? The, the in the blueberry? Yeah. Yeah, well, just I've only heard the one that Sam Johnston tells. I think I might have been there when David told it. Okay. So I've got a translated version that Sam Johnston likes to tell. And then he went through it, and Bessie Cooley went through it, and, and so. That's just interesting that so it's like the same story, different birds. Oh, okay. But, but, you know, yeah, it's like from the crane story is yeah. Uvic. I don't know. Uvic. Oh, it's from, from Uvic. Yeah, from yeah. a story. It's a Uvic story. Okay. Um, it's not even kind of But like my whole thing is like, Ravens don't have blue eyes. Like everything right. on a raven is black, <laughs> including their tongue. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a little oh, bit like, right. is, yeah. did the like did the Who story become here yeah. and and, and, and then just kind of become a cricket story? Or you know what I mean? Because oh, I wow. never really heard that story as a cricket story until David told it one time, and I was thinking, there is yeah. nothing on a raven that's blue. I mean, <laughs> everything is literally black, including their tongue, their feet, their eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to me. Well, maybe it was those little black, those little, little blueberries, blueberries that are really kind of black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could be one of those real dark ones, yeah. So here, well, here's a little short one, and I, I've got the audio to this. Um, so we say, So this one is beaver and porcupine are friends. Porcupine uh, goes to Beaver's house. It's a gay di hiti day. Chasakach we do ha wu hit ye ah a ji wunak. The porcupine leaves one of his, he, he left one of his quills there. And it's really neat because ha wu is the word for hair. And that's also the same word for a porcupine quill. Sege di kestu tua oshku. The beaver didn't want it. Porcupine says, let's go to your house. Beaver says, get on my back. The, the porcupine climbs up on the beaver's back. Sagedi na hash adi de woohoo. Sagedi swims towards this floating piece of driftwood. Sagedi ye ya waka ahidi aya. He says, the beaver says, this is my house. Khashakach na hash adi ke kim dlitet. Comes from Kark, or well, Tessin, that's why you get the M. Uh, the porcupine crawls onto this piece of driftwood. Sagedi yende wuhu. Whoops. Yende wuhu. The beaver goes to the swims to the shore. 
Khasakach Tainakhwuti. Porcupine was all alone. Khasakach Atwushi. Porcupine started, he started singing. We are Nakashtikh. Oops, you don't need that. And that's let the lake freeze. Uh, where'd it go? We are Wutlitik. The lake froze. Khasakach Nailtewugut. Porcupine went home. Wush in has ach kambligat They played together again. Khasakach ye ya waka. Achtik ika keku. Porcupine says, Get on my back. Seketi khasakach dik ika keku wukut. Beaver climbs onto Porcupine's back. Khasakach. As ye kem glit. The porcupine crawls up into this tree. Sigat we as. This tree is very tall. Sigeti chasakach dik e kach wugud. The beaver steps off of the porcupine's back. Oh, where did that go? Chasakach yinde. The porcupine crawled down. Beaver was all alone. There's no way I can climb down. Finally, the beaver climbed down. We soon a kawaka a kawaka. He scratched up with these long claw marks the bark of that tree. Achaya we as da shuni kim glehe tli yachtu watin. This is why it looks like somebody broke up the bark, probably on a cottonwood tree. That's a little short story. It's very cute. Yeah, I think that is. I mean, that's certainly a storyline that they would chuckle at and mm -hmm. that they could follow, and yeah. And we had fun telling this with my kids, because then we did, like, we made up a little song for freezing the lake and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. You could do that as a little interlude. There could be a couple songs in there. And there's, yeah, and so I've got the audio for the story. I've got several versions of the... Um, that's somewhere on, on, your, on this website, I'm sure. I don't know if I have this one up there. And so one thing I've done is just created this big Google folder and shared access with a whole bunch of people so that you can go in and look at all of this stuff because there's tons of stuff too from the TCLL program that uh, Jessica Chester Seyrud sent over, stuff that people have done in the inland. And so if I find something, I put it in there and I try to put it online. But what I'll do is I'll put this one up with the audio. Um, on our on our class page so that you can find it and then you can just do it one sentence at a time if you want to there's lots of stuff you could do with that and then there's there's not a whole lot of vocabulary it's everything in Clinkit is complicated mm -hmm. uh, but th there's a bunch of stuff there's that's really fun too. yeah right, right. we'll go right. just to go yeah. as yeah. for somebody walked mm -hmm. um, you know Ed Littlefield when he came to do the uh, Voices on the Land project mm -hmm. with Shannon's classroom they did it all, they did the stories all in Tlingit. So like all the other classrooms did the stories in English, you know, Raven stories or whatever, but he made them do the whole thing in Tlingit. And so it was just constantly repeating the Raven stories. Uh -huh. They did that, that's where I learned that. Oh, they did this one? Not this one, oh, the that's uh, one that, um, the crane, no, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, Susie James. Oh, Raven host of Potlatch? Host of Potlatch, so yeah. yeah, and like that story for Either he hosted the potlatch, or he didn't get invited to the potlatch, or you know, or he got invited, or it's just like so many different versions. He crashed the potlatch. Yeah, he crashed the party. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the great thing is, when we go back to our talk about normalization, you know, so for me, looking in the second grade, you know, when they went to the 
two days. Right. So that's really, I mean, you know, that's going through. And at the end, I mean, there was some interspersing of some plinket there. But the but all the kids, they, they thought it was completely normal. You know, already, you know, as second graders, mm -hmm. you know, it's nothing. I mean, it was just, mm -hmm. as I was sitting there, and there was the story that presenting and everything, and then they, they walked around the building, and they'd take a look at those, and, and it, it, it was completely, you know, I mean, you, you see that now when, when you uh, are teaching your, your, your classes at the SAR, these, these little kids now are just saying, what's the deal? It, well, it is. It starts, it's really cool. Just the, the strange sound. The, I should say the different sounds for them that sound strange when they first are a bit silly. It's, it's normal now, which I think that's when you, you see that. And when Hans does it, they always know. Yeah, it's not normal in it's every not, school. But when it's, from, but it's coming from another teacher and trying it initially, that. there was a bit of that. But you're right, it's mm -hmm. now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely making Because this was the Harvard, I think it was the Harvard for you. That, no, it was the Riverbend group that I saw that, that came through on that, uh, uh, that the second day. I think it was the second day. We did this one the other day. This one was pretty fun. We did, uh, this is a project I did with a few elders and with Jeff Lear's stuff to sort of try and recover all these different parts of a salmon. And I say recover carefully be, because I kept asking people and, and a lot of our language community I think was kind of forgetting like what we call the, the fins around and stuff. The fin is generally called awu, which is really interesting because that means feather, right? So feather and fin are the same word. That's really fun. Which and totally makes sense when you think about it. Right? They're structurally sort of similar and they also provide sort of the same function for the animal. And there's fun stuff on here, like a uh, kweyi is a marker, like a flag. Kadeyi is a, a road on it, and that's that line down the middle of the salmon. Um, Nora calls the, fip, the flippers all da'achayi, which is its paddles around it. Uh, and then I, this came up the other day because we were talking about body parts. And I said, well, a salmon has like different body parts than people. A fish does, has different body parts than people. And so it has Sitkakutli, which is the the bump on the ridge. Instead of having, you know, people have a back. Yeah, and so why are all of them possessed now, but except for the wa I mean the nose it should be a wa right? And they're all possessed nouns except for those. And I always heard them as possessed. I'm just curious if there's something I'm missing. I've, what I've heard, and this is something that I think needs to be explored a little bit more. Because I asked, I was asking speakers when there was like a dog there, if I would say like Kate Jin. And they said yes, Kate Guk. And so, but some other speakers have said it needs to have this possessive marker on it. And so, I think. If it's, if it's removed or dead, you say, then you use those possessive markers. And so a lot of times when our speakers are talking about animals, I think they're talking about them deceased or like on like kit gushi, right? But if, if you start looking in the stories and stuff when they're talking about that, they, they would say, but it's, it's tough when you're using the stories because then the raven's like kind of a person, right? So, but yeah, that's a good question. Because so all the other parts are possessed in that. Yeah, and some of them are right. Some of them, kheu seems to be nuchi seems to be tawu is. They all are right. <laughs> but I don't know if you would say khat I don't know yet. So that's one of those gray areas for me where I've heard both, and so I'll, I'll have to find some. I'll have to ask some speakers and see what they say. Okay. Well, let's do some uh, let's do some sound practice. It's always a good time to do that. And nobody says masseuse. Somebody crushed my dreams recently. Oh. We can still say it. We'll keep it alive. <laughs> Even alive. That's that's my that's one of my lies that's in this book. So. <laughs>
Okay, but the other thing we, we keep doing too, which I think is really good practice, is counting the letters, right? So if we say wasus, how many letters are there? Two, three, four, five. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, right? So we have five there. Does it even? It's supposed to be some fancy thing. Huh. It's yeah. not that fancy. Not so <laughs> <laughs> Although I did realize, I think I can write on this thing. I don't know what I'd do. Oh, Let's see, so I can go. Which one is it? Or draw. Right. Yeah, maybe not very accurate. Not, maybe now that little pen thing works too. Maybe. Let's see. Oh, Because it's supposed to be able to use your finger or the. Yeah. What about in that other bar? Not the black bar, but the one underneath it right now. There's sort of a pen thing, right? Where is that? Where is it? Down. Uh, so right now you can. What happens if you click out of that black bar? Uh, yeah, I just I think it doesn't work with a. It doesn't work with a Mac. Uh, <laughs> so the keyboard works with a Mac. But yeah, so it's just like this weird crossfire. Why can't they all just get along? Right? <laughs> Figure it out, technology people. Well, Macs are the ones who are... Um, no, maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. So the W sound. Wa. 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 Wasus. Wasus. Ma. Ma. Masus. Masus. Cha. Cha. Cheech. Cheech. Uh, uh, eat. Eat. Da. 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 Ook. Ook. Na. Na. Nusk. Nusk. Sa. Sa. Seek. Seek. Sa. Sa. Seek. Seek. I'm going to write a story someday about like a belt and a black bear and my daughter. Because it would be like, or it would be like, seek. 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 <laughs> Sha. 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 Ta. Ta. Tia. Tia. Ta. 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 And so a tzi is any, it's a bird, any bird, right? But then you're usually talking about, well, it could be any bird, but then they all have their own names, too. So that's what you, what you, what you meant at the beginning of the class when you said we have ducks, but we have names for all these birds. Yeah, all this, all those, those little black ducks and the mergansers and all, there's so many different bird names out there. And so it, it's really fun. Then you go through some of the, you know, there's the dictionaries that are out there. Then there's these lists. And on those lists, there's even more. Um, like these little yellow-bellied sap suckers are Shaki Khan, redhead, firehead. Yeah. 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 Yuck. 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 And we also just keep looking at the vowel, a long vowel, a high vowel, a short vowel. Because you know, after we get, I think we get really hung up on the consonants, and they're hard. But then later, the vowels are going to be playing I tricks on us. Speaking of birds, quick question: uh -huh. Ock is a bird, yes. What is? Ock. Yes. Because I was in a class, the Monday night class down the other day, and they were saying that Ock is um, a little, uh, it's a yellow lichen, and that's why they use it for the color yellow. Oh, okay. Now that's. It's it's if I go back in and be like, hey, you know. Ak is that little yellow 
Warbler, I think yeah. it's called. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then Sejuani uh, is that old man's beard. Yeah. And that's sort of a greenish, like the Seahawks' weird colors that they use yeah. for the kind of a neon. G. G. Gooch. Gooch. Ka. Ka. Cost. Cost. Ka. In Chei. In Chei. Ha. Ha. Hasha. 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 So we want to make sure that we're not going. <laughs> There's none of. We haven't fallen into our deep sleep yet. We're just doing the wind thing. <laughs> Hasha. Exact same spot as the K. So between a K and an X, we go. They make the X sound all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the sound. And without our lungs, we get the extra special version. And that used to be crab apple, like a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then for, what, for whatever reason, that name got given to apple, and then crab apple became <laughs> So kind of like strawberry and... Yeah, so yeah, strawberry, also. same thing. So that, that name got given to the domestic strawberry, and then chinkitchuk, <laughs> and then kuh got given to rice. Although I think you still say kuh, like that one didn't go chinkitkuh. <laughs> But another one that did was kah is now a chicken, and then klinkit kah the clinket chicken is a grouse. Why would you change? Why would you add klinket to something? Just like take it back. Yeah, there's like four or five of them that did that. I think kunz did as well, and that one would have happened pre-contact. Klinket kunzi is like the roots of like a swamp hemlock or something, and there's only those. Because otherwise, we've been naming things like celery. We started calling glit ka ya eighty. So it would be like white man's thing that we have. But it's weird, like these ones, the names got given out. I always thought that was interesting. It, um, so we have a cabin on Richmond Hill, and we have a lot of And then there's also uh, possessed by the shark. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of fun because yeah, there's this rule of possession which we didn't we're not going to cover that in here. Um, you can watch some of the intermediate videos if you want to. And there's like it's one of these things where there's like these it's like there's only like five rules. But it's like okay, it's like this except for this, except for this, except for this, except for this. Uh, but it's really fun. Maybe I'll show you that. I'll show you the chart just so you can see. What I'm talking about. The brains explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll just do a one, yeah. one just minor one, head explosion. Just a little one. <laughs> just a little one. If I could find, if I could find where I put it, that's probably the key. Maybe I put it here. Probably not. No. Okay, hold on.
Oh, shucks. Well, I got a chart on here. I couldn't find it. Um, so there's this rule of sort of possession. And so basically, so you've got tas, and then that becomes ach tasi, right? So ach would be the possessive. You need some sort of noun before it, which is often a, a possessive pronoun. And then it's going to get a, a, usually a vowel for a suffix. That vowel is usually going to be the letter I. So you sort of think of the letter I as a default. So this is why you hear ha ani. So that's the first rule, is it's usually an I. Unless the end of the word is what we call rounded, in which case it'll be a U. I got to find the chart. I, I can't explain it without the chart. It doesn't make any sense. Um, So here's my handy dandy chart. Very easy. Okay. So we have, this is what we start to look at later in life. <laughs> is one, is the end of the word open or closed? And we know if it's open because it ends with a vowel. And we think of Hawaii because in Hawaiian, nothing can end with a consonant. Nothing. This is why if your name is Bill, they'll call you Pila. <laughs> right, so pila is just Hawaiian for bill. So the first thing is if it's if it's closed, you're going to add an i, right? Tus e, right? So there's the thing. It's going to be an i. If it's rounded, and if it's rounded, it usually is going to end with a w, like ya k. It's going to become ach ya g. So it's going to become a u instead of an i. So the exception one is like, it, if it's round, it'll be a U. Not only is it a U, but the KW turns into a G. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. So then, if it's open, you have to add the Y. So like, the word for lake is ah. If it's my lake, which it couldn't be, ah, ah, ye. So it gets the ye. If it's rounded, like gao, for a drum, ah, so then, so the rounded becomes a, a U, unrounded it's an I. No problem. If, so the tone of that suffix will always be the opposite of what's before it. So you go hi, di, ah, ye, tus, e. But if it ends low, ach, tsa, ye, ach, so this is where the tone becomes really important because that suffix will always be the opposite of the and preceding on, vowel. On is ha -ani. So then, any of these C H K underline K T T L T S, they all have voiced versions. So if there's a suffix on the end and it ends with that it will always become voiced. So that's why you go from kooch to ach kooji, kook, ach kooku, kook, ach kooku, hit, ach hiddy, cake, ach kedli, hoots, ach hoodsy. And the last rule is if it ends with a U, which is any form. Now that thing. Well, let's see. Now you're going. What does that do? Now maybe <laughs> you tap that mark. I think it just messes. I think it's somebody out there who's like just mess with them. Just mess with them. Use two fingers. Use the pad. Yeah. 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 And it has to end with a U. Double tap it. That might be it. Double tap? Yeah, double bump. But down low. Mm. No. No. Okay. Oh, wow. And it, I, it was my finger. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to 
do this. Or, yeah, exactly. Oops. Well, that's pretty incredibly complex. So it things get fun. Uh, things, the fun gets funner. How do you do this? Smart board tools. <laughs> right? You think you're so smart board? Why don't you put yeah. a possessive suffix on a click it word? Right. Okay. And then we also, like, there's, you learn all these different rules. And sometimes there'll be four or five parts to a rule. And then there'll be, like, all these exceptions. So towards the end of the semester of intermediate click it, I kept saying, tonight we'll read from the book of exceptions. <laughs> okay. Gua. 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 Qua. Qua. On quayi. On quayi. So you see that quayi, that's a marker. On is land. Land marker is a flag. Each is a reef. Each quayi is a buoy that marks where the reef is in the water. Uh, with the KW at the end. Yak. 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 Quat. And then at the end, ak. Zisk. Hwa. 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 There's like this little sound at the end. It's hard to do because it pulls it in. Z. Z. Yeah. So it's like if you had a little tiny birthday candle. Z. 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 It should, so this, this sound, this X apostrophe, should be right where the K is. It's right in the pizza burning zone. Uh -huh. So like sometimes I'll walk around, I'll just go, and I'm just practicing making that, because that's where that sound comes from. Your tongue goes up just like it's going to make a K. That scrapey sound. But then you gotta make that without your lungs. So that is a tricky, sneaky sound. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of saliva on just right on the ridge. This sort of thing they do in linguistics where it's like if you say the word tree and in well speak English when if we say tree people will usually think of a tree from like there's a kind of a default version of a tree right so usually if you say tree here people are probably thinking of a spruce right like they probably wouldn't think of some tree that doesn't grow here like a, you know, like a palm tree or something with hot that means fish but for people on the coast they'll usually think salmon. But people in the inland, inland speakers, they'll think trout. It's just kind of a cool thing. So I, I, I pick the little Nemo fish, because I'm like, well, I don't want to try to favor anybody. Because I used to have salmon in there, because I was like, that just means salmon. And I went inland, they're like, not here. Candle, you should be able to blow it off. No. No. Little breath of air. Quack. 
and then we'll just say this. So later you'll see kinship and like males have a hunch because it's a, a male's older brother, right? And so female has an older sister and a younger sister and brothers. Males have older brother, younger brother, and sisters, right? And one of the big things with this too, if, if you really study like clinket kinship, is it's not even about like blood re relations, about clan relations. So like technically all those people are the same clan as me, same generation who are, they're, if they're male, I've got to look at them and figure out you know, whether they're my hunch or my keek. And it's about who's older, right? And so I, I have someone and... hierarchy. Yeah, it is. Because if this is your hunch, you don't tell them what to do. Yeah, but he tells you what to do. sisters are older or younger because they are not going to be on the same playing field as you anyways, right? That's right. That's matters if your brothers are younger or older. And it also has to do with responsibility. The hood is responsible. So if this little guy is getting in trouble, that guy's getting in trouble. And if he dies, then the little brother gets married and play. And it could be like a, a friendship it's, thing, it's, too. It's going to be a great soap opera. <laughs> right? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> they call it the um, Game of Clans. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing here too is like you could be friends and you both happen to like, you know, I have a friend and he's on the Raven Moiety different clan, but then one day like we're if you're getting close, you can use some of these kinship terms too to talk about closeness. Or if it's an actual clan relationship, there was a guy who was probably 80 years old, and he used to call me Aksani, his uncle, because I have the same name as his uncle, right? So that namesake thing, you step right into those clan relationships, and also it could be friendships as you become close with somebody, then you start using a really close kinship term. And so I, have, yeah, I had a friend, yeah, and he was like, gonna cheese keek, which is younger brother. And I said, how old are you? And he was younger than me. So I was like, yes, I got to dominate. You got to do my dishes. Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, so then, yeah, it kind of ends with like the easiest sound in the world. We're ending on that. We like that. We like that. <laughs> and glacier is something that easy too, right? Is it sit? Sit. Sit, sit, sit. Yeah. And then, so this is where, and there's like place names, it gets really fun. So you got Sitka. And there's a place called Sitka on the glacier. So Ka is on, and it comes after whatever it's on. Right, so in English you'd say on the table. table. Clinket you'd say table on. The dog ka. Excuse me. And then seat is a a channel. So there's a place called seat ka. And then she is an island called she. And there's a place called she tika. Only one of them is actually sitka. So yeah. sitka comes from she tika Sitka is Petersburg and also the Gastineau Channel. Sitka is what we let's call them clinket. And then sitka uh, is a, on the glacier. That's a place. Um, and then I oh I was, I was looking that up and I got I got sidetracked with showing you rules of possession. <laughs> there is another thing uh, I didn't scan the whole book because I don't, I don't think they would want that. Uh, but there is a section. I took the section from Thornton's place name book and scanned it and then scanned the text as well so that you could look up place names. So there was a place that you were looking for, like you thought you called it Strawberry Land. And what's the name of it? It's St. James Bay. And 
in the Thornton book. It doesn't. Oh, there's talk nothing about um, Goat Heart Mountain or Mountain Goat Heart. Oh, yeah. Right above yeah. it, and then the the bay that's north of it. There's a name for, it, but they don't have any. I cannot believe people in the world that think there's crazy wow. names. Over there. So that's. Let me see if I can find. I think I know which area you're talking about. It's kind of. It's across Glen Canal by the island. You know, kind of. Sitka. Uh, Let me go back up. I was yeah, hoping that, that there would be a name. I was really looking for that, and I was like, dang it. But I got excited about the Goat Heart Mountain because mm -hmm. that's what my dad used to call that. Now it's called Mount Gollum. Oh, for a guy right. that died in that plane wreck. But my dad used to always, because we'd, we'd sail north of there and go into what they call Boat Harbor now. Uh -huh. like our typical place. Is it kind of right city. here? Uh, no. It's up here a little bit? Because this is where... Right there. Right in there. Right there? That, that I think, is for Boat Harbor now. Yes, this is this one here. It's General So it's just north of that, actually. Let's see oh, the just bay up here? Yeah, yeah, see, there's a bay right where you are now. Oh, and okay. We're just, we're just outside of the bay, just south of the bay. And it's not in here. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. oh, shucks. So either nobody remembered or it's only Yeah, this one only goes down to yeah. there. But it's just south of that, you can see it, it's on there. Yeah. Anyway. Huh. So Shuck name. on me, that sounds good to yeah, me. Yeah, I want to name it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, William Henry Bay. Yeah, that's just north of it. So but this one, um, so it didn't have that, but you could take something like uh, like Taku Harbor, like you could hit Taku, and then a bunch of stuff comes up, and so there's Taku, and there's you know Taku River. And you could just sort of glance around and find you know there's Tea Harbor, and there's so you could find a bunch of stuff in here to start learning place names. Yeah. I love this how the translations make so much sense. Wushtek at yeah, so it's it's really fun and just. Yeah, as we get later into Klinke, you can break that stuff down. Tlach Satanjin, this one's really funny because it should be Tlach. Um, so we, we put that name on the mountain like officially a couple years ago. And so Satan would mean for a stick-like thing to just be laying there. Tlach is like really. Tlach Satan, really laying there. Jin is a hand or an arm. So it's like the hand that's just really laying there. So they call it hands at rest. But Johnny Marx used to say it also means like he doesn't play with himself. So <laughs> it's like at the moment his hand is just a right? So I remember like, you know, they kinda of made a big deal about that we we put the name on there and they're calling us for calling me for these interviews. And they said what does it mean? I was like, Klach Satanjit. It means like a hand that's resting. And they said, and this was like for the news. You know, so like, does it mean anything else? And I said, oh. no. Because <laughs> <laughs> they won't let us name things after that. But there's some things that you can see in here too, just based on what we've sort of already learned. As you come in here and, and look at these, so Nech is that cloudberry. Ah is a point of land. Ye. When you get into place names, it's usually just showing a relationship, not really possession. Right? So it's not really the, the point that's owned by. Although it does follow those same sort of um, those same rules. But it's really it's just showing there's a relationship. Yeah, I think so. That's Lena Point. What's that Lena Point shot of sight? Where? Yes, Chawata, yeah. Where that It's out there. I don't think they want to. If it, if somebody says somebody reads that, they they might go dig it up. So they they try to not mark those ones. That one's really fun. The verb means like for water, if it's real cloudy, like especially from a glacier, and all those sediments settle and it goes clear, that's what that verb means. Okay. And then there's there's lots of stuff. So you see you see sit right there. Ah, there's the little bay. Sha nach, sha nach is that 
Lemon Creek area. So it, it'd be fun to start getting some of these uh, back into use. Mm -hmm. Sit. Oh, ye. So there you see the glacier point. So there's a bunch of things that keep Takukon City. That one is possessed. That would be the glacier of the Taku people. So are you working like with the Forest Service or with other organizations? And as they are, are uh, and they're, they're doing signage? Yeah, yeah. So it, it gets tricky because they can only, if they make a map, mm -hmm. they can only put on there what the U.S. Board of Geographic name says oh. is the official name. So, but well, we've got a plan. And so we need someone to go out there and execute the plan. <laughs> so the plan is to put a whole bunch of names out there back on the land, because we've got them documented. So Sea Alaska is doing this awesome project they call it the Cultural Atlas, and we've been working on it for decades, where they're going to have this interactive map at some point where you could click it, and then it'll say it for you. We tried to develop some apps where you could like look, and then you'll see if there's a place name nearby you. Uh, but then as far as the official part, I think if it, if it has a name already, I want to start an initiative where we try to kick that name, like Mendenhall Glacier, and we try to kick that down to the also known as name, and then have the Clinket name be the official name. And that's a way to start to move the colonial names towards retirement. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And then to start sort of getting resources out there. So, because people will say, well, nobody could say it. And we say, okay, well, you just click on it. You say, you know, and so, but then there's a danger because someone was saying, um, uh, Sayyik is the name that they put onto Gastineau School, right? And that's that's a huge win. That's it's a big negotiation. <laughs> and somebody said, it's not hard to say, it's Sayyik. And I was like, oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Shucks. I'm with you, but let's fix that first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the Forest Service, so if you wanted to have an official name go, it's got to go through like this US, this Alaska Historical Commission, and then it's got to go get approval kind of from, I think, the city council, and then it's got to go to the Forest Service, and it's got to go to the US Board of Geographic Names. So we're trying to fast track another thing, too, where the Forest Service would take like 10 names at a time but they have to be places that aren't named but then it can bypass all those others and they'll give it right to the USGS so we want to start doing that so we can start putting the clinket names on for things that don't have official names well probably when the Mendenhall Glacier was named it was much bigger and it was in a different place right so let's name what's there now <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and there's all, well, there's all kinds of things like that, those mountains that are around it. I don't think there's, I don't know what the Clinket names are either. So, But going through here, we could probably identify things that might not have official names and just start submitting them in batches. So I think they're doing that. They're starting it in Huna as a pilot project. Mm -hmm. I haven't checked in on it in a while. But then another big thing that I want to see is we'll pick like 10 of them in the Juno area and we'll start pushing them into the consciousness of the community by saying them. Because there's some really, really fun ones, but Zanti Kahini is, uh, Zanti is the name of the hill that the Capitol building is on. So that whole hill is called Zanti. And then Zanti Kahini is the river at the base of that hill. That's what, that's what Johnny told us. Uh, and then there's, there's some other ones we could be using in here as well. So Okay, any other questions? Any other things that we can go over in these last five minutes? I think we did you know, some of this stuff and then some other fun stuff that we like to think about is just how space and, and time kind of work in Clinket. And it's just these are kind of conceptual things, but these are pretty fun. So like whoever's the speaker, 
These ones, ya, he, we, and you, are all about how far is it from me, the speaker. Right, so it's really relevant to where you are. Then there's a whole other set that has to do with uh, how two things relate to each other. So, you know, above it, around it, below it, beside it. And there's a whole bunch of those. And they kind of need to, they need to belong to something. Sort of like body parts and sort of like kinship terms. It's got to belong to something. And then when we think about word order, those things come after. So we said, nadak ka, on the table. Nadak tai under the table. So those are other concepts that are pretty fun to sort of start thinking about. Then there's a third set of directionals, which has to do where the ocean is. Right? Yeah, so it's, it's this one. So we got a couple, uh, there's a couple of illustrations for these things. Uh, they're kind of fun. This is really cool. Did you see a student did that, or a student just printed it? No, they printed that, and they put it on, the, on those boards. That's cool. That'd be cool to just slip those around like, in lots of classrooms. And yeah. You know, like so we want to start putting those, because we used to, I used to print them, and then would put, would just tape them up. But inevitably, people would take them down. So we're trying to make them a little more permanent looking, so that people will think twice before taking them. That looks like someone official did that, and I'm not going to mess with it. Right? Yeah, yeah, because she's an artist, so she, she knows what she's doing. So what are those things that they're, they're putting, that they put in Floyd Drive, they got from Sea Alaska, it's on the paper? Those are those panels. Oh, oh the panels. Oh, yeah. All those four panels, I think. The cornerstones. How did they determine which school got them? Is that in Riverbed? It's pretty cool. Wow. Well, I think David and Paul are like that. Oh, I have no idea. That's true. That's true. I think that's where she's in action. I think that's where she's in action. I think that's where she's in action. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this one is, and so these are other concepts like you're going up away from the water, you're going down towards, you know, it's got to be the ocean, like a lake doesn't count, it has to be the ocean. Because by the lake shore or by the river is different, so there's niche, but that niche is only the one on the ocean, that's the only niche there is. But how come there's sunshine and not rain? <laughs> <laughs> it's cloudy. <Right>. <laughs> it, it happens. Yeah. Would you? I drew this picture on this one of those. This is supposed to be place based. This is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Well, I got another one. I got a bunch of weather ones where it was like. Um, I think it says like the weather is nice, and it's a picture of like just drizzle. <laughs> 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 and another one, it was like Plinket emoticons, and they're all the stoic one, and it had all these different emotions. So, so all right, well. That would be cool. But it's cheese. Uh, it's, it's been fun. We'll see you guys next week. See you, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. And, uh, so we should send you anything that we want to share with people, like a folder with a few things in it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and you can send that to me, like, right before class. It's fine. And then I'll just get set up and start opening these things and definitely let me know if you got any questions or anything and yeah. Since we're meeting at four, do you have time after the meeting tomorrow? Or before the meeting? What's that? Do you have time for me the four after or four o'clock? Oh, on Monday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you said tomorrow. Did I say tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. No, That's okay.
we are resting tomorrow. Yeah, okay. no, it's the it's the Lego. It's the robotic thing tomorrow. I have all the artist workshop.